Bikaiji Rustam Kama, the 24th of September 1861 to the 13th of August 1936, was one of the prominent figures in the Indian independence movement. Topic: Early life. Bikaiji Rustam Kama was born to Bikai Saurab Patel on 24 September 1861 in Bombay now Mumbai in a large, well-off Gujarati Parsi family. Her parents, Saurabhji Framji Patel and Jajibai Saurabhji Patel, were well known in the city, where her father Saurabhji, a lawyer by training and a merchant by profession, was an influential member of the Parsi community. She was invited to hoist the flag over the parliament in Germany. Like many Parsi girls of the time, Bikaiji attended Alexandra Native Girls English Institution. Bikaiji was by all accounts a diligent, disciplined child with a flair for languages. On 3 August 1885, she married Rustam Kama, who was son of K.R. Kama. Her husband was a wealthy, pro-British lawyer who aspired to enter politics. It was not a happy marriage, and Bikaiji spent most of her time and energy in philanthropic activities and social work. Activism In October 1896, the Mumbai presidency was hit first by famine, and shortly thereafter by bubonic plague. Bikaiji joined one of the many teams working out of Grant Medical College which would subsequently become Hafkin's Plague Vaccine Research Center, in an effort to provide care for the afflicted, and later to inoculate the healthy. Kama subsequently contracted the plague herself, but survived. As she was severely weakened, she was sent to Britain for medical care in 1902. She was preparing to return to India in 1908 when she came in contact with Shyamji Krishna Varma, who was well known in London's Indian community for fiery nationalist speeches he gave in Hyde Park. Through him, she met Dadabai Naoroji, then president of the British Committee of the Indian National Congress, and for whom she came to work as private secretary. Together with Naoroji and Singh Ruabai Rana, Kama supported the founding of Varma's Indian Home Rule Society in February 1905. In London, she was told that her return to India would be prevented unless she would sign a statement promising not to participate in nationalist activities. She refused. That same year Kama relocated to Paris, where, together with S. R. Rana and Munchersha Burjorji Godrej, she co-founded the Paris Indian Society. Together with other notable members of the movement for Indian sovereignty living in exile, Kama wrote, published in the Netherlands and Switzerland and distributed revolutionary literature for the movement, including Bande Mataram founded in response to the crown ban on the poem Vand Mataram and later Maiden's Talwar in response to the execution of Maiden Lal Dingra. These weeklies were smuggled into India through the French colony of Pondicherry. On the 22nd of August 1907, Kama attended the Second Socialist Congress at Stuttgart, Germany, where she described the devastating effects of a famine that had struck the Indian subcontinent. In her appeal for human rights, equality, and for autonomy from Great Britain, she unfurled what she called the flag of Indian independence. It has been speculated that this moment may have been an inspiration to African-American writer and intellectual W.E.B. Du Bois in writing his 1928 novel Dark Princess. Kama's flag, a modification of the Calcutta flag, was co-designed by Kama, and Shyamji Krishna Varma, and would later serve as one of the templates from which the current national flag of India was created. In 1909, following Maiden Lal Dingra's assassination of William Hutt Curzon Willie, an aide to the Secretary of State for India, Scotland Yard arrested several key activists living in Great Britain, among them Vinayak Damodar Savarkar. In 1910, Savarkar was ordered to be returned to India for trial. When the ship Savarkar was being transported on docked in Marseille Harbour, he squeezed out through a porthole window and jumped into the sea. Reaching shore, he expected to find Kama and others who had been told to expect him who got there late, but ran into the local constabulary instead. Unable to communicate his predicament to the French authorities without Kama's help, he was returned to British custody. The British government requested Kama's extradition, but the French government refused to cooperate. In return, the British government seized Kama's inheritance. Lenin reportedly invited her to reside in the Soviet Union, but she did not accept. Influenced by Christabel Pankhurst and the suffragette movement, Bikaiji Kama was vehement in her support for gender equality. 
Speaking in Cairo, Egypt in 1910, she asked, I see here the representatives of only half the population of Egypt. May I ask where is the other half? Sons of Egypt, where are the daughters of Egypt? Where are your mothers and sisters? Your wives and daughters? Kama's stance with respect to the vote for women was however secondary to her position on Indian independence. In 1920, upon meeting Harabai and Mithun Tata, two Parsi women outspoken on the issue of the right to vote, Kama is said to have sadly shaken her head and observed, Work for Indians' freedom and I independence. When India is independent, women will not only have the right to vote, but all other rights. Exile and death With the outbreak of World War I in 1914, France and Britain became allies, and all the members of Paris India Society except Kama and Singh Ruabai Rana left the country Kama had been advised by fellow socialist Jean Longuet to go to Spain with MP Tirumal Acharya and Rana were briefly arrested in October 1914 when they tried to agitate among Punjab regiment troops that had just arrived in Marseille on their way to the front. They were required to leave Marseille, and Kama then moved to Rana's wife's house in Arcachon, near Bordeaux. In January 1915, the French government deported Rana and his whole family to the Caribbean island of Martinique, and Kama was sent to Vichy, where she was interned. In bad health, she was released in November 1917 and permitted to return to Bordeaux provided that she report weekly to the local police. Following the war, Kama returned to her home at 25, Rue de Ponthou in Paris. Kama remained in exile in Europe until 1935, when, gravely ill and paralysed by a stroke that she had suffered earlier that year, she petitioned the British government through Sir Kowashi Jehangir to be allowed to return home. Writing from Paris on 24 June 1935, she acceded to the requirement that she renounce seditionist activities. Accompanied by Jehangir, she arrived in Bombay in November 1935 and died nine months later, aged 74, at Parsi General Hospital on 13 August 1936. <laughs> Legacy Bakaiji Kama bequeathed most of her personal assets to the Avabai Petite Orphanage for Girls, which established a trust in her name. 54,000 rupees 1936, 39,300 pounds, 157,200 dollars to her family's fire temple, the Framji Nusarwanji Patel Ajiari at Mazgaon, in South Bombay. Several Indian cities have streets and places named after Bikaiji Kama, or Madam Kama as she is also known. On 26 January 1962, India's 11th Republic Day, the Indian Posts and Telegraphs Department issued a commemorative stamp in her honour. In 1997, the Indian Coast Guard commissioned a Priyadarshini class fast patrol vessel ICGS Bikaiji Kama after Bikaiji Kama. The high rise office complex in the posh location of South Delhi, which accommodates big shot companies such as Jindal Group, Sale, Gale, etc., are also named as Bikaji Kama Place. This is a tribute to her. Following Kama's 1907 Stuttgart address, the flag she raised there was smuggled into British India by Indulal Yagnik and is now on display at the Maratha and Kesari Library in Pune. In 2004, politicians of the BJP, India's Hindu Nationalist Party, attempted to identify a later design from the 1920s as the flag Kama raised in Stuttgart. The flag Kama raised, misrepresented as original national tricolor has an Islamic crescent and a Hindu sun, which the later design does not have. <inaudible> <inaudible> Further reading Sethna, Korsht Adi Madam Bikaiji Rustam Kama, Builders of Modern India, New Delhi, Government of India Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Kumar, Raj, Devi, Rameshwari, Pruthi, Romila, eds. 1998, Madam Bikaiji Kama, Women and the Indian Freedom Struggle, Vol. 3, Jaipur, Pointer, ISBN 81-7132-162-3. Yadav, Bishambar Dayal, Bakshi, Shiri Ram 1992, Madam Kama, A True Nationalist, Indian Freedom Fighters, Vol. 31, New Delhi, on Mole, ISBN 81-7041-526-8.